Hello, everybody on YouTube and all the NFL YouTube prognosticators and NFL fans everywhere. This is Andrew Warren, back here once again. Excuse me, but giving you my AFC and NFC Conference Championship picks. Here they are. Last week I went 3-1. and one. And um, the only loss I did out of, out of them, which I believe it was the... Um, well, for straight up, I went three and against the spread. I did three and one, and in both and both of them, I did three and one against the spread and the um, straight up. So and the clunker out of that was the um, Kansas City beating the Indianapolis Colts, which I thought the Colts would upset the Chiefs, but that didn't happen. But hey, you win some and lose some. What can you do? But anyways, um, last week that the Colts never bothered showing up for that game. It's just like, what the hell happened? You know, Andrew Luck didn't have any answers at all. Yeah, it's distracting. But anyways, Luck had no ans answer at all. It just he, he had no one to go to. It was pretty, really, really lopsided. You could say that. But anyways, uh, going into that was like, all right, whatever. Just do what you need to do. But, but sure enough, it did. But, and... And for the Dallas and the Rams pick, you know, Dallas was lucky to get the game off in time, you know. Rams barely, the Rams barely um, covering the spread, which was an eight, seven point spread, and they won by eight. But, you know, going into that game, I, Dallas put, a, put, a, put up a fight in the end, but just didn't work out the way it did. So, um, then, but the Rams did shut down Ezekiel Elliott really well. They really did, and they shut him down. They shot down uh, Dirk Bascott too, so it was like, whoa. I mean, that defense, I would say right now the Rams have the best defense right now, I would say, but you know, if come to think about that term and that terms in then, I think that, that was to be the case of that, but you know, other than that though, going into that game though, now, now they get to face the tough New Orleans Saints, which I'll get to the Saints and Eagles game in a minute. So that that's how the Rams won, you know, they the Rams won because Dallas, Dallas couldn't stop the run. Dallas couldn't gain more yardage. Never bothered. Never did. So, but it was an amazing run for uh, Dirk Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. They finally got over the hump in the wild card. Never made it a conference championship game since '95, I believe. So, something to think about on that. And my New England Patriots and the LA Chargers. Man, if you would have told me that my New England Patriots would put up 41 points. This week, I would have th thought you were crazy, but they did. They put up 41 points. It was a 41-28 that the re the Chargers g gave up a g couple of garbage time touchdowns or something. But anyways, though, if they put up 28 points this week, though, I don't know about the Patriots. Though, if they do, they give up 28 points this week, that that is not getting, that's going to be a really tough one to come back to. But anyways, but no, but Philip Rivers didn't have no answer. But don't get me wrong, Antonio Gates, that probably was, get, it was his last game. Really good player. One of my favorite players that's not on the New England Patriots right now was Antonio Gates, who was on the on the active roster right now. That was probably Antonio Gates, the best one. It, it could be his last game that in that game. And you know, he had a, his last catch was a touchdown catch and made it forty one twenty eight to Philip Rivers. I mean, I mean, Antonio Gonzalez had a. I mean, uh, Antonio Gates had a great career. You know, everyone from the uh, San Diego L A Chargers. It was like it's. An incredible run, Mr. Elite Eight. He played in for Kansas State in the in the March Madness. He tried to get to Alabama, but he was said he was uh, he wanted to play both college basketball and college football. And look at him though, you know, just he turns out Nick Saban was right though. He's too small to play in the NBA. Look at him now, you know, he became one of the one of the greatest tight ends of all time. You know, no doubt about that. You know, probably one of the best tight ends that never reached the Super Bowl besides um, Antonio Gonzalez. So, so um. Anyway, so I think that being said, though, I think Anto Antonio Gates is heading to the Hall of Fame. I think he's going to be there in the next five years. I, I think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And tight ends one of my favorite positions in the NFL. I think they do everything. They catch and they block and all that. And that's what Rob Gronkowski did. He did a lot of blocking this past week. He got um, Sony Michel uh, four or five touchdowns. It was pretty really good. But anyway, so going to the you know, going to the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, Philadelphia and New Orleans Saints gave um, Nick Foles and the Eagles another chance and opportunity. They really did. But they tested the waters for the New or for the Saints defense, though. 
And of course, I'll, Nick Foles threw it too hard, and Alshon Jeffrey um, the, pass, the ball passed Alshon Jeffrey's went through his hands, and it got picked off. Very sad way to go end in, for that one in, in, in that. But I don't blame too much at all on Alshon Jeffrey and in the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, and they and Nick Foles. And, I mean, and stuff like that happens, you know. And now because of that, though, um, Doug Peterson said said. Uh, Carson Wentz is going to be the main guy going into the training camp next year. So I'm like, oh my god! And the, but if I were Nick, what, what the Eagles would do, I would still stick with Nick Foles, like hang on to him, because you never know what could happen in, during training camp. So if anything happens with him in training camp, just go with Nick Foles. I mean, that's how I feel about it. So I would still hold on to Nick Foles if I were Philadelphia. I would not let him go yet. If he does go, he's probably going to go to Jacksonville. What do you guys think of that? So put your comments down below about um, Nick Foles on that. So anyways, now, now we're going to have new Super Bowl champions now that the Philadelphia Eagles are out. It's going to come down to the final four. The LA, the, um, LA Rams versus the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Championship game. And the um, Kansas City Chiefs and the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. All right, let's kick things off from the um, New Orleans, um, New Orleans Saints and the um, L.A. Rams, and uh, that's the three, the three o'clock game going in. And I think this is going to be a really a good one. I think this is going to be an offensive explosion. I think this is going to be a tight spiral to that, and so it's going to be like, all right, whatever. So, uh, but this is really, really, really tough. I mean, I mean, I don't get me wrong, and don't get me wrong. I think that the um, I think going into this game, I think um, New Orleans is going to have the big higher power on defense. I think that's the one to keep momentum. This is going to be a defensive battle, I think, personally. I think I think they met a few not too long ago, I think. Both teams met in week five. I mean, on um, week nine, excuse me. So um, that's going to be an interesting come out. The Saints came out of that game 45-34. That was an, a shootout on that one. I don't expect a shootout in this game. I think that I expect a touchdown differential. I think in this game, I think it's going to be in being Jared Goff versus um, no, Drew Brees in that situation. A young quarterback versus a veteran quarterback. That's that's the way it's going to go in, in both both games this weekend. So I think this is going to be really good. So I um, think it's going to be a back and forth game. I think the I think this is going to be decide who who is, stops really good on defense. That's how it normally does anyway. But in that case scenario, though. I think this is going to be a little bit of a high-scoring game. I think I, it's in the Dome. They met, I told you I met in Week 9 in New Orleans, which the Saints came out on top of that one, 45-34 in that game. So um, in in that case scenario around, I think this is a, something This is going to be a, lo, a little bit of a low-scoring game, but not by much. I think this is going to still be in the 30s, maybe in, maybe not in the 40s, I don't expect. But, but and going into that game, I think this game is going to be a... Um, a little bit of a defensive this more de defensively this time around. I think this is going to come down, and this is what they're going to need to do, and, and et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, uh, going into that game, I think this is going to be a um, no, and whoever wins. Well, I think whoever gets the ball in the in the first half, in the second half, is most likely going to win the game. I think. I I think that's the way I'm going to lean to, but I don't really know that. Usually, that is not usually the case, but. But this week, I think it's going to be the case. But, you know, I think because you never know what could happen. But anyways, going to this game, I'm going to say uh, the New Orleans Saints over the L.A. Rams in this game. On the line, though, that the Rams, I mean, the Saints are favored by three and a half points in this game, which I think that's a really good number. I really think I like that. Normally, I would do that. I mean, this is going to be something I would do. But I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with um, the New Orleans Saints. Minus three and a half. And the final score in that game, New Orleans, 34. The New LA Rams, 27. Before I get into my picks, say hi to Coco. Eh, my cat wanted to keep me company today. So this is Coco right here. So say hello, Coco. Eh, she's a, eh, she want to be bothered right now. But anyway, that's Coco right there. She just wanted to keep a little bit of company. You can see her tail coming around, you know. <laughs> So if you see her around, she probably just wants to be around me. So don't worry about it. All right, moving on. So um, the Kansas City Chiefs and the New England Patriots. So like like I said, and like I said, the the, the one who's going to get the George Halas Trophy for the NFC Championship game is going to be the Saints. 
So I forgot to mention that. But anyways, the New, the New England Patriots and the Kansas City Chiefs, the winner receives the Lamar Hunt Trophy for the um, the, for the um, the right to go to the Super Bowl. So anyways, going into this game, they met in around week eight or something. Week week eight. Hold on, let me double. Week six. I remember week six. So going into that game was a. Uh, this was a high-scoring game, though. New, my New England Patriots. With, this was Gillette Stadium, by the way. This was in Gillette in Foxborough. So, anyways, going into this game, it's going to be. A, I expect a little bit more sco low scoring, though. My New England Patriots were rotting the, the, uh, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs out, and all of a sudden the Chiefs came back, in that game. So I expect to be something similar this time around, but a little bit of a low-scoring game. I'll explain the low-scoring low in the game in a minute. But going into that game in Week Six, these guys met in um, in uh, the, the Chiefs and the Patriots and Sunday Night Football was around the final score, of 43 to 40. I think it was a last-second field goal for Stephen Gronkowski. Going into that in in that scenario it was a high-scoring game. It was a quarterback duel going out of that game and. It was like pretty much no defense in that game, pretty much. And that's going to be the key factor in this is in that one. And those two defenses are not don't have the best defense in the world, but you know, other than that, those could be really good. As I was saying though, back back with the Chiefs though, when in the Patriots history and Tom Brady in the New England Patriots, the last time they won an Arrowhead, Week Eleven, two thousand four, that game, Deion Branch came back from an, like a um, leg injury. Went after that week two against Arizona in that game, in that one. So, and going into that game, Dick Vermeil was head coach at that time. I'm trying to think. I think Trent Green was still there at that time. So, that was the last time the, the New England Patriots won in Kansas City. It was in like 14, like over 14 years ago. So when and they won that game of 27 to 19. And of course, you got the Bernard Pollard game when Bernard Pollard um that ace now Tom uh, Tom Brady and the the 2008 opener, and of course you got the two. I think um, I think 2012 they met again in Kansas City and they lost or something like that. And then all of a sudden they um they came around again in 2016 and the Patriots won that in July. All of a sudden the the following week they uh, meet again and and the opening night again in 2016. And not only that, the Patriots losing that one again. And uh, that was a, when the Patriots were defending Super Bowl champions, open up their Super Bowl 51 banner. And, of course, um, they met this year. So, a little bit of there, a little hit and miss on that such case scenario. But, anyways, going into that game, I this is going to have a huge chip on the shoulder for the New England Patriots. That's what they normally do. Especially when they're the underdog, you know. Tom Brady don't like being the underdog on that one. That's going to show it, too, This I think, this week. But, oh, my God, God, I'm. I went a little conservative. That's why I didn't make a video earlier. So I had no idea what, what's gonna happen in this game. I. It's got. I was kind of like doing a coin flip, if you if you know what I mean. So let's see who who am I gonna pick. It's one of those games I gotta flip a coin. Which I'm surprised it's not a pick 'em game. Because immediately when I, when the Patriots won and they confirmed the AFC Championship game, I the, my first thinking was it's gonna be a pick 'em game. It's gonna be toss up, and. The weather and and the, and now going into this game, huge weather factor. They said it was going to be cold. The wind chills are minus five. I thought they said um, snowstorms, but I don't know if that was uh, that was out of the radar in Kansas City or not. I don't know, but I know there's going to be snow on Sunday here. So I'm definitely tell you that. But but it's not here. It's in Arrowhead. But you know, but the weather's definitely going to be a factor in this game. No doubt about that. So. I don't know, but the problem is the huge crowd in Arrowhead. That place is noisy. That place is screaming. You know, remember that game when they broke the record too in 2014. That was Tom Brady's one of the worst performance in his career. Probably the worst game, worst Patriots game that Bob Kraft was under too, to be exact. They called it the Monday Night Massacre. Jimmy Garoppolo scores a touchdown in that game. That's when Belichick asked a question about Tom Brady. He just said, "We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati." But this is this is definitely not the New England Patriots in 2014. This is a much different team, though. You can definitely tell the difference on that game. So, in in that game defensively, they were a little bit better, though. But in that case scenario, but you know, but this is a much different scenario. But you know, in that one, so oh my God, I just really, really can't really focus on that. 
You know, that game in Kansas, in that stadium is noisy. Really noisy. It's right up with um, Seattle Quest Field, too. Because I don't know the name of the stadium. I can't remember the name of that stadium right now. But, it's, like, Seattle Stadium, you know, it's really loud, too. So, kind of like that. So, uh, spike going into this game. It pains me to say this. It really, really pains me to say this. The winner of the um, Lamar Hunt Trophy. And, it, and funny, the Lamar Hunt Trophy is named after the Chiefs ownership, too. And it was the founder of the of when the Dallas Texans do at that time. So, I hate to say it. The Lamar Hunt Trophy is going to the original team, the Kansas City Chiefs, I think. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I it just it's hard to bet the New England Patriots. No doubt about that. And I'm saying it, and I'm a Pats fan. But as a, as a sports guy, too, as a pick'em guy, I have to go to Kansas City in this game for some reason. It pains me to say it. It pains me, pains me, pains me. But it's hard to get bet against the New England Patriots. No doubt about that. But that home field advantage is going to be effective in that game, I think. I, I don't know. But that game has been ugh. But the last time I picked the Kansas City Chiefs, in the Chiefs and Patriots game that was an arrowhead. I picked the Chiefs. They won that. So that was in 2014. This I'm going to have to do the same thing. I can't. I, but I'm still rooting for the New England Patriots. If I get this wrong, I'd be happy as hell. No doubt about that as a Patriots fan. But I got to roll Kansas City in this game because of that home field advantage. That place is going to be noisy. That It showed up with them against the Colts this week. It's definitely going to show up in the AFC Championship game. No doubt about that. So anyways, I like the Kansas City Chiefs over the New England Patriots. It pains me to say it, but I'm going with it. But on the line, though, the New England, the Kansas City Chiefs are favored by three points in this game, which that really surprised me. I really thought that was going to be a pick -em game. If this was a pick -em game, I'm definitely going to roll with the Kansas City Chiefs, but it's the favorite by three in this game. I'm definitely rolling with the um, New my New England Patriots minus three because I think that's going to be a low-scoring game. So, my, so the final score in that game, the Kansas City Chiefs, 24. My New England Patriots, 22. That's going to wrap up my um, conference championship picks. Shout out this week was Robert Sports Show, which I didn't know he was a Kansas City Chiefs guy. So, hey, and hey, you and me, are your team and my team are battling it out, buddy. So, it's going to be a really good one. So, we'll see. And also, check out, um, I don't think he's an NFL YouTube prognosticator, but I checked him out a few times this year, called Real Chiefs Talk. He's a big Kansas City Chiefs guy. He talks about the Chiefs all the time. So, anyways, I'll, I checked him out. He's really a cool guy to watch. I mean, he, we talked a few times when they've met each other, each other this year, so he's pretty cool to talk to. So, he's a real, he's a real cool guy. So, anyways, you can check out um, Real Chiefs Talk, too. I don't think he's an NFL YouTube prognosticator. I think I talked to him about it a couple of times. I don't really remember exactly. I've been really busy with school as of late. But definitely check him out, though. Really a good guy to really check out his videos. If you want to look around, definitely check him out. And check out my good old buddy, my sports reviews. I mean, he does really good. Um, you know, it's, he does sports talk like that. He was a big... I know he's a Patriot hater, too. But, yeah, he's really cool to talk to. He talk, talks about other sports like basketball and um, football and all that, too. But, anyways, you can definitely check the, all three of those guys out. Now check out um, the Robert Sports Show, and you can definitely check out um, Real Chiefs Talk, and you can definitely check out um, my sports review. And you can definitely check all three three of those guys out. They're really good guys to watch. So, so anyways, definitely check them out. Those are my shout outs this week. And before I go, I was thinking, I mean, maybe let me know. I mean, I know in the past I did other sports videos like the NBA, and I did the NHL. What do you guys think? Do you think I should do that during the, the week off during the Super before the Super Bowl picks? Let me know, cause I was th that was the one thing I was really thinking about doing, not uh, putting making an NHL video first or making an NBA video, and then the following week I'll probably do an NHL video tomorrow or maybe an NBA video tomorrow depends how I feel, but you know I may do it tomorrow, I may do it Friday, maybe the weekend, I, I don't know, depends on m how busy I am. So let me guys know what you think. I mean maybe do you think you want me to see that see me to do that before my Super Bowl pick or before the Super Bowl week comes or something? Do you think I should do that? Let me know. So um, let me know in the comment section below, and if you want to see, let me you want to see me do that or not. So, anyways, um, that's gonna wrap up my uh, my video of this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all soon. Peace.